Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Hoops and Heels from the Sports Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We just got done talking about Game 3, 4, 5, and 6 of the Women's Softball World Series, and now we're going to talk about some predictions going into Week 3 of the CrossFit Semifinals. Thank you guys for joining for our last segment. I appreciate it, everyone. I'm excited for this. So Week 3 is hosting three semifinals. Unlike the other weeks which have hosted two, we got three this week. The North America East, South America, and Africa regions. And we're going to make predictions for all. Last week, I made predictions about the Week 2 foot semifinals, and I made a video recapping how the semifinals went for the Oceania North America West region. So if you're interested in checking that out, I recommend that you go do so. And then next week, of course, I will be recapping how the North America East, South America, and Africa region semifinals go, and, you know, possibly making predictions for the games. So if you're interested in seeing if my predictions of this video are correct, make sure you stay tuned next week to hear about the results. Okay. Let's start with the North America East region. 11 women will qualify to the CrossFit Games, the top 11 female athletes. Now, I'm excited in particular to talk about this region because the person I'm predicting that will win at the semifinals in this region is also someone who I think might win the games overall. Okay. Oops, sorry guys. Okay, so, yeah. Here we go. The first person that I'm predicting will win at the semifinals in this region is Tia Claire Toomey. She didn't win the corner finals, and she isn't technically the top athlete going into the semifinals. She also didn't beat Laura Harvoth at Rogue, but at the same time, she had just gone through pregnancy at the time, so there was a lot of factors that you know went into it. But now it's been a year since her pregnancy, so hopefully that will help. I have a lot of confidence in her. I literally don't have anything, like, it's Tia Claire to me. Like, I don't know. Like, I just like, yes, she, of course she would win the semifinals. Um, I have so much confidence in her. And if I don't see that she wins the semifinals, I will literally be shocked. Like, my mouth will be on the floor for, like, a day. Like, I will be that shocked. At second here, I have Emma Lawson. So, in the quarterfinals, Lawson plays first, but worldwide she plays second. It gets super confusing how all those placements work. And then Alexis Raptis plays first in the corner finals worldwide. Now, Raptis is technically the top athlete going into the semifinals of this region, but I'm going to have to choose Emma Lawson as a second place finisher. So then that would make <laughs> Alexis Raptis at third place. No matter what, I think she's going to be at the games, both Emma Lawson and Alexis Raptis. But here's something I'll say. I can totally see Raptus, Lawson, and Toomey winning the games at some point. I'm not saying this year. I'm not, I'm not saying like this. Yeah, I'm not saying this year. I'm just saying like this point sometime in my lifetime, I can see all of them winning. So those three are my podium, my top three for this region. At four, after the third place, it really gets kind of confusing because a lot of them are so equally gifted in certain areas. A lot of them have the same strengths and the same weaknesses. So it gets confusing where you would put certain people. But anyway, at fourth, I have Danielle Brandon. This region I'll say is particularly hard to make predictions, like I said, but there is still that number of women that I would be shocked to see them not qualify at the games. So they are on this list of 11, even if it's not like in even if I'm not like 100% confident that it would be in this order, I definitely do think that they are going to be at the biggest games. In fifth, I have Haley Adams. So she's making her way back to competition after taking last year off. I'm excited to see how she will do because in some way, this is a comeback for her. I definitely think she will qualify. She did well in the quarterfinals, but these workouts for the semifinals are very heavy and that has been more of her weak point. I think she may come out and surprise us though with that. Next, I have Amanda Barnhart. Because of her previous injury, I don't think she'll be a podium contender at all, but she will still be in the middle and safe for the games, I feel like. Next, in seventh, I have Brooke Wells. Oh, sorry. Now, during the Opens, she fell into her muscle, so I have concerns there for her. But because she has been in the game so many times and has that experience and possibly her injury is fully recovered, I think that she will place seventh or be around in that area and be qualified to compete in the games once again i also just want to take a quick side note and say that how are all of these crossfit competitors so beautiful like if i like how do they look like that when they're working out like i'm sorry what i think it is so insane i'm like y'all are not human like the fact that you guys can do that like like lift that heavy run that fast all of that 
just do CrossFit in general, like compete at CrossFit nationally. Like the fact that they can do that is insane to me. But then on top of it, they look good when they're doing it. I'm like, that's that, that's not right. That's not human. Anyway, <laughs> moving back on track. In eighth, I have Jordan Sheck. I don't think I'm saying that last name correct, and I apologize. I was really trying hard to figure out how to pronounce her last name, and I just could not get it. I apologize. Now, she went to the semifinals last year, placing 13th, and then the previous year, she also went to the semifinals and placed 14th. 13th and 14th are very, very close to qualifying out of the games, and she is only 21 years old, so she has that young energy in her advantage. I'm not like 100% confident that she might go to the games, but I feel like she should. Like, like if I could like pick people, that I'd be like, you're definitely going. You're you're like, you're allowed to go. Like, you don't need to qualify. Like, I would have her because I feel like she's been working so hard and she's been so close to qualifying for the games that I'm like, this year better be the year that she is qualifying. In ninth, I have Aniha Greer. She has been competing for a while and has had a couple attempts to make the games and was very very close also. My concern for her now is that she is short in height, and we have seen that being short has put you at a disadvantage in some of these workouts. Regardless, she is super strong, so she still has that shot and advantage in that. But yeah, we have seen some weaknesses in athletes be because of their height. I mean, when you look at like rope rope, sorry, rope climbs and box jump overs, that is going to put you at a disadvantage if you are very short. Okay, and moving on to 10th is Paige Semeneza, who doesn't get much attention, but always just impresses everyone, I feel like. She's bigger than some of the other people we've talked about, and I think she's going that's going to help her, especially with like these strength-focused workouts and, you know, taller, taller people workouts, I guess. Like workouts where if you were, I guess, taller, it would give you an advantage at some point. Finally, at 11th, I have Shelby Neal. Okay, she literally is the happiest person, like, when she's working out. Like, I am, every single picture of her working out, she's, like, so, like smiling, like, I'm, like, how are you not looking like you're in pain right now? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, these people have to, like, model or something because, like, how do they look, like, good, like, that good when they're working out? It's so insane to me. Anyway, Shelby Neal is also very short. She did make it to the games last year, so she has that experience. She is very dense and muscular, and even though she had rope climb issues in the past, she can use her strength to her advantage to stay in the field. But like I said, being short does not help you at some challenges like rope climb, but we'll see. There are so many times that I've been impressed by people who like technically have a disadvantage or something, and then they just go out and impress everybody and just like be everybody. So like even if I say like you have a disadvantage at this or you have an advantage of this like it's not 100% because there's always people with just this like ability to just impress everybody with their skills and their strengths and weaknesses and whatnot I don't even know if any of that just made sense but you get the point okay so that concludes the North America East region so now we're going to move on to the South America region where only three women will qualify for the games at first I have Victoria Campos She was just so far ahead of everyone at the quarterfinals, like so far. So I have so much confidence that she will be first. If not, she will be in the top three. And second, I have Emily Adrade. She was second in quarterfinals, and there was a pretty big margin between her and Campos, but then there was also a pretty big margin between her and the rest of the competitors. Lastly, in third, this is a bit harder to make because there isn't, there was just so many people that I, could be like they would also qualify for the the games in this region it was it's really hard to make that prediction for you know the top three especially in this region i guess so but i ended up putting amanda fusuma i mean okay this actually is okay this is the craziest of my prediction because she plays 41st in the quarterfinals but it was because she had a penalty in one event at least i mean that's that's what i think okay or maybe I don't know. That's what I think happened because when you look at her scores at the quarterfinals, you'll see that her event one score is just so significantly worse than the other events. And based on her reputation and history as a CrossFit competitor, I feel like event one score was because of a penalty. If that event one score had been more similar to her scores in the other events, then she would have been likely been in the top three in the quarterfinals. So I have confidence in her coming out in the top, but then again, it's going to be very close with third place in this region. I, I, I think that third place is going to be like, oh, like 
no one predicted it correctly because it could have been I just feel like it's going to be really close but those two other people that I predicted for the top two in one place two in one second of first place are I really have a lot of confidence that they are going to be there at the games moving on to the Africa semifinals where literally only one woman will qualify from this region to the games so for that I have Gamari Reineke that there really isn't a competitor in this region who is just so above everyone else like the same thing with like that I just went over like it's just so difficult to make a solid prediction because there's so many people that are so close and talent strengths weaknesses and all of that and stats too that I'm like I can't make a solid prediction but I'm gonna have to go with Gamari Reneke. I think it's going to be such a close tight competition, but you know, Renekki just has so much experience and even though she didn't win corner finals, she did really well and she has been to the semifinals three times and last year she came third at the semifinals. So if she has improved and gotten stronger, I think she has such a good shot of making it to the games this year. But then again, both regions are going to be super close. I mean, also North America East will be close, but my top three, I just have so much confidence that they will definitely be in the top three. We'll see if I'm incorrect. And if I am incorrect, it's going to be really awkward. Um, but you know what? That's, that's the fun of making predictions in sports is it starts good conversation. So that concludes the show for today. Thank you guys for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Thank you guys once again, and have a wonderful day. Let's go.